America claims to be a representative democratic republic birthed out of a revolution against oligarchical tyranny. It's a country where we the people are supposed to vote for leaders we believe have our best interests in mind. If we look closely, there's not a lot of candidates that we can legitimately say do care about the people. I think we have a lot of candidates that want to make themselves sound good and smart and speak a lot of Spanish, but do they have the good of the people in their hearts and minds? Corporate media has been pushing the notion that centrism is what will really show us how much politics cares about the people. Legislate in the middle. But in reality, centrists look at basic human rights and claim it's unrealistic. Centrists like Biden and Mayor Pete claim that Making sure Americans are healthy and financially sound is an outrageous idea. How dare you want to be healthy and not make a monthly payment to keep it that way? What they're doing isn't extortion. It's just making us pick them up by their bootstraps. And inevitably, uh, we're going to throw out our backs and then be addicted to their painkillers, which is only going to mean heavier boots for us to pick them up by. Progressive candidates like Bernie Sanders, the godfather of the progressive movement, and Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang get smeared and are called extremists because of the platforms they stand for and have been pretty damn consistent on. Bernie has a 30-year consistent record of standing by the American people on virtually every issue from health care, income inequality, race, and much, much more. He was arrested numerous times rallying, protesting, and marching with civil rights activists. And in terms of health care, he pushes for the truest version of Medicare for All because, quote, he wrote the damn bill. And now you have faux progressives like Elizabeth Warren moving away from this idea to Mayor Pete's Medicare for all who want it. We all do, Petey. Okay? We, we all want Medicare for all. We all want it. No one wants to get sick and then spend most of their time doing math as their appendix spreads rot from the inside out. At that point, the quadratic formula can wait. Now, Elizabeth Warren does call this choice. And we do have a choice. Our choice is to go with a candidate that is willing to stick with progressive ideals, even though it'll mean a tough road ahead and go against the status quo, or Elizabeth Warren's murky flip-flopping to win a popularity contest. Bernie and Tulsi are also currently taking on tech giants that are climbing their way to the top of this greed-driven capitalist ladder. Bernie has called uh, uh, the internet to be a public utility and wants to reinstate net neutrality. Make the internet Switzerland again! The internet can and should be a tool available to everyone for educational and entertainment purposes. It should be a tool to connect us rather than control and divide us. And Tulsi Gabbard is currently suing Google after they prevented her from running ads after the first debate. She's always the most Googled candidate after each of the debates that she is a part of. If her lawsuit goes through, that'll mean that these tech giants will have have to be heavily regulated when it comes to electioneering. Taking stands like this to show tech giants that they can't run amok and control the landscape of information. And Americans will not stand idly by as their porn buffers just even a little bit too long. Okay, and porn can be both educational and entertaining. Tulsi Gabbard is the only candidate that criticizes the military-industrial complex and America's hawkish foreign policies. These policies involve enriching corporations and the politicians that support these and use middle, the middle class as cannon fodder to line their, the pockets of the elites. She talks about not being the world's police and creating a better society for our citizens at home. A reallocation of the federal budget that involves actually taking care of people with services and advancements we are making. Andrew Yang 
is the only one that talks about a universal basic income, which would balance out the economy by helping the working middle class. Looking at UBI as a handout, as both conservatives and centrists do, is an inaccurate representation of this idea. It gives us, the people, boots to actually pull ourselves up by. And these ideas all fall under the category of democratic socialism. Now, centrists have turned words like socialism and revolution into buzzwords and stripped them of their meaning. Much like the conservative politician, the centrists have turned socialism to mean communistic authoritarian dictatorship that strips you of your freedom. Well, it isn't. Socialism can be used as a restraint on capitalism when it starts running wild. It's like uh, when you go to a party and your friend gets like way too drunk and now wants to do some crazy shit that might set the house on fire. Socialism is the designated driver or the house chaperone that knows how out of control this friend can really get. So they get this friend home, turn their head to the side, and sleep on the floor just in case things turn catastrophic. And then the next day, they have photographic evidence that this friend did in fact pee in the pool and try to have sex with a vase because they thought it was a Disney princess. Centrists have also turned the word revolution into violence. First of all, uh, not all revolutions have to be violent. And second of all, America's foundations are in a revolution. Without a revolution, we don't have a country. America currently has had a socialist revolution, and it's not for we the people. It's for the corporate sector. I mean, bailing out Wall Street and the banks was a revolution for the banking sector and anyone that understands what Roth IRAs are. Deregulating Big Pharma's was a revolution to profit off sick people and your lack of erections. Letting corporations hide money in offshore tax havens is a revolution for every rich person in America to get richer and, and put tiny bikinis on their dollar bills. Denying climate change is a revolution led by billionaire think tanks that pay into trashing science and possibly funding our own extinction. And letting Jeff Bezos walk around is a revolution to piss in the eye of the working class. And unlike Bezos' employees, there is no time limit on how long this pissing will take place. Centrists push for the idea of incrementalism. The idea that progressivism is the final goal. So things like a more fair living wage, Medicare for all, Americans to be involved in an economy that they can actually benefit from, and Jeff Bezos to stop pissing in the eyes of, of various different classes of people will take time, and we will have to be slow about it. The problem is that in a lot of these things, we have been taking it slow, and it's been incrementally getting slower. The incrementalism has worked really well for corporations and the elites, we have been incrementally making these institutions more powerful behind closed doors. But lucky for us, the doors have been blown wide open and we see through the facade. The centrists like Nancy Pelosi have championed for capitalism as hard as conservatives like Mitch McConnell and rich boys like Trump. The whole point of this system is to turn everything into profit. Nature, humans, social movements, they all have a Macy-style price tag attached to it. Things have gotten so bad that even American elections are bought and paid for. Both the DNC and the RNC are privately run corporations that own our elections. And it's gone so far as to make money off money itself. The Fed is a private organization that prints and sells money to banks. We've turned currency into a business model, proving that all of this is based on imagination. Oddly enough, though, there's never a Black Friday sale on cash, right? It's always quite the opposite. But this rampant capitalism pushed by centrists and conservatives alike is what is needed to keep the idea of American exceptionalism alive and well. It's kind of like the same way when someone wants to keep the party going. Right? They go outside, and they throw up in a bush or someone's shoe so they can get back in and keep drinking. 
Eventually, alcohol poisoning is going to set in, and we'll have to pump their stomach. Capitalism works the same way. The system is built on creating more and more profit every year, every month, or every week. The sales pitch of the American dream is, sure, it's nice that you have that, but don't you want more? Don't you want a bigger house and a sexier family? Support American Corporation LLC, and we will sell you all of those things. Buy our money! The idea of wanting more and more and more is why Americans are pretty unhappy. They're not living in the moment. They're not living for what they have. They're living for what they don't have. They're never appreciative of what they actually do have. And this idea has been put into the fabric of this society by not just holding the rich and powerful on a pedestal, but also demonize those that call for equality and consistency. Better is only sold to us when we want more consumer goods, but not in terms of things that actually matter. What we need is better equality, a better healthcare system, a better political and economic system. If we ran an economy on consistency and adjustments to ensure our basic needs, we'd probably be a better society. That has now become a progressive idea. Our revolution is not a violent one. It's a revolution of shifting our thoughts. We need to shift away from our thoughts of American exceptionalism. That's a product that's been sold to us by, with, with the help of neoliberal centrists and neocons so that they can profit off these ideas. And the cost of these ideas has been the, our society's soul, happiness, and goodwill. We need to be revolutionary in how we the people treat each other. That's how we can fight for and push for progressive ideals, by living it. Change doesn't come from the top. It comes from the bottom up and the middle out. Centrists are in the middle of the road. And if they were, they'd care about the middle class. And who wants to be in the middle of the road? You know, that's where a lot of high-speed traffic is. Get to the sides and start moving forward instead of dodging traffic in the middle. You know, Frogger was never really progressive. So it's time that we started acting revolutionary for our benefit. Educating someone about the truth of socialism or a social movement or our own history is a revolution. Helping someone who's going through a tough time financially or otherwise is a revolution. Listening is a revolution. Learning is a revolution. Patience is a revolution. And compassion is our revolution. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I'm going to be on tour all over the country in 2020. You can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com to check out my full tour schedule. On January 3rd, I'm going to be at the venue on 35th in Norfolk, Virginia. On January 4th, I'm going to be at the Comedy Closet Comedy Club in Columbia, South Carolina. On January 5th, I will be at the station in Carborough, North Carolina. On January 17th, I'm going to be at Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York. On January 24th, I'm going to be at La Costana in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. On January 25th, I'll be opening for my good friend Lee Camp at Ruba Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On January 29th, I'm going to be at the 730 Tavern in Boston, Massachusetts. And then on January 31st, I will be at the Appalachian Theater in Portland, Maine. If you're any, uh, if you're in any of these cities, uh, I hope you get some tickets, come hang out, come check out these shows, uh, and uh, the rest of my tour dates to see if I'm coming to a city near you are available on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can check out the Patreon page. You can uh, download one of my newest albums or just check out past videos that... Uh, 
are also available on this channel. Make sure you like and subscribe, and thanks for, thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you on the road.